Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to welcome you to this webinar, The Three Common Mistakes That Physicians Make When Changing Their Jobs or Career. Now, I want to start by just introducing myself and, and sharing a little bit about why I uh, decided to create this particular webinar. Um, so I, I'm Dr. Maisha Claiborne, as you might some of you may know who I am, some of you may not. And uh, I'm a family doc by trade, family physician, uh, trained in undergrad at Emory University Medical School at Morehouse School of Medicine, and uh, did my family practice residency down in Orlando, the land of Disney, um, Florida at Florida Hospital. And, you know, when I was in my residency, I experienced um, this, this, this thing that we didn't have language for back in the day, uh, called burnout. And what it looked like was this. <clears throat> I was post-call one um, evening in my second year, <clears throat> and I was just feeling particularly down. Um, I, I had noticed over the past few weeks that I had become more disconnected, become more um, sad and depressed and started to isolate more from the people who uh, were in my, in my class and in my tribe. And um, that evening I went home and I just, you know, I was in the shower and I said to myself, I, I really don't think I can go on like this anymore. Now I had this bottle of Percocet that I had um, looked at that I had from a surgery, a knee surgery a few months before. And um, I was looking at that bottle of Percocet after I got out the shower, I was looking at that bottle of Percocet and, and really just saying to myself, you know, this is, this would be so easy. It would be so easy and no one would really, you know, miss me. And, and I just, but, but I, I, you know, I took that bottle and I opened that bottle and I looked I looked down the barrel of, at those, you know, that half bottle of Percocet and something just clicked. Like, this is not the way. This is not um, how you're going out. And, and it, it talk about white knuckling. I literally, in one hand with the bottle of Percocet, reached for the phone with the other hand and with shaking hands, I dialed my first number. And dang it if it didn't go to voicemail. And something in me just said, just try again. And I dialed another number and I dialed another number and I was getting voicemail and I dropped to my knees and I just said, please just get me through the night. And what I, you know, I woke the next morning to find myself um, laying on the bed with a pen and a paper, realizing that I had written myself to sleep through my own tears. And, 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 and that day I knew that when I woke up that day, I knew that the way I had been operating in practice, and this was in residency, was the way I had been operating was not the way that I was going to be able to have my career. So it was the first, it was the first time I realized that my career was going to look different from the rest. Now, you know, I then built my career um, searching for what would an ideal career look like? What would it look like to practice inside of my own values, practice in a way that's congruent with um, my uh, very belief system? And I did that for about uh, four years out of practice, started my own wellness center in uh, 2007 and have uh, built that practice up um, for the past 10 years. And, um, you know, as things would have it um, in 2012, I uh, was experiencing some of the sim similar symptoms that I experienced in residency where I was uh, begin to feel depersonalized, feel distant, feel alone. And um, this time, um, I actually knew what was going on. This is the early days where um, burnout was starting to be recognized. And I reached out to a coach of mine, uh, Dr. Dyke Drummond, the Happy MD, you may have heard of him, who I actually now work, work 
with um, and as a coach. And he, he actually helped me to transition in terms of my current career. So um, what I'm going to share with you today and why I shared that with you is because, you know, one of the things that happens as physicians as it, these days is that we're thrown into these circumstances. We're not asked what it is that we want and we don't take time to create what it is that we want, which I'm going to be detailing in just a moment in the three common mistakes that we make when we're changing jobs or career. I lived that a couple of times and I came to learn that it is, the, you know, when you live it a couple of times, you come to learn the things that you need to do before you um, consider not only a job change, but a career change. So since then I, I have, you know, built my practice uh, very successful integrative medicine practice. I'm very into um, the mind-body aspect of healing. And I've gone on to since um, transition, once again, my career, and this time not because of burnout, but because I have seen a need with my colleagues, with you all, with, with physicians, um, for support at, in, in the realm of career fulfillment, in the realm of life balance and burnout. So now I I do uh, coach physicians, and I also speak and train at various hospital organizations around burnout prevention, career fulfillment, and life transition. So that's who I am. That's why I, I do this, because I've lived through it. And back when I lived, when I was experienced it back in residency, and I know this is still the case, this has not changed, because I talk to and see countless um, physicians who say the same thing. It was not a safe place for me to go to and talk to about what I was going through. Um, there were implications for licensing. There was implications for, you know, the stigma at work. And, uh, and so, you know, having lived through this a couple of times and not had anyone um, and, and having had to do the work to dig, to be able to find someone even the second time that I experienced burnout, uh, I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, I have the commitment now to shift that conversation such that um, there are more of us out there supporting physicians. There is an advocacy for us when we are suffering, when we need to make a change and, um, and to bring us up to the 21st century where it comes to um, be, getting the proper or the very effective support. So that's why I do what I do. Enough about me. I want to move it along. All right. So I'm just going to stop here and just allow you to take a look at this word crowd, word cloud, and ask if you at all see yourself. Oh, <laughs> I have a Mac, so <laughs> if you at all see yourself in this word cloud. Now, what I'll ask you to do is if, if you do, just go ahead and chat. One word in the chat. Where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself in the word cloud? Okay, very good. So, There are several reasons why there you go. So so you know the there there are several reasons why physicians are changing jobs or leaving medicine, like leaving their jobs. And um, you know, one is the emotional exhaustion. It's it's this inability to recover with time off. So like, have you ever gone on a vacation, a seven day vacation at that? Have you ever gone on a seven day vacation? And when you come back, you, you, you feel like you need to take another vacation. You don't feel rested. You, and as soon as you get back on that Sunday afternoon, you already start to dread the, the getting ready for the next week and going back to work. That's emotional exhaustion. The second thing is depersonalization. Um, now if, I don't know if you, you can remember a time or if you've uh, found yourself 
making some sarcastic uh, comments about your patients to your colleagues. It's so this, this depersonalization is the cynicism and the sarcasm and this sort of negative detached um, attitude. And it's not because you don't care. It's, it's, it's directly related to compassion fatigue. All right. So the third thing is that reduced sense of accomplishment. No matter how much you do, no matter um, how much harder you work, you really are not feeling like you're making much of a difference. Um, now, some of you may recognize these three characteristics. We're not talking about stress. We're talking about burnout. So we're all stressed. Doctors are stressed. Life is stressed. And when we're stressed, um, you know, we may have, we may feel like we have too much on our plate, too much work, too many patients. But we can imagine that if we were to change a few things, that we could get it under control and we feel better. But when we're talking about, and I'm gonna go back, these three characteristics right here, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and reduced accomplishment, we're talking about burnout. It's the feeling of emptiness, being devoid of motivation beyond caring and hope. Now, the thing that's so insidious about being burned out is that you just, you don't see it coming. You don't see it coming. It's very subtle. People who are stressed know that they're stressed, but most people who are burned out don't realize it until they've hit that rock bottom. So then, you know, where are you? Where are you on the pain scale? Now, I know we have, you know, different uh, specialties probably in the room, so you can look to see, you know, where you are on a scale of one to 10. And just, you know, think about where you are on that scale of one to 10. And, and, you, and here's the thing, you want to tell the truth to yourself. You want to tell the truth because we have a tendency to downplay our suffering, and especially women in medicine. I don't know how many times I've talked to women in medicine, and I ask them what their level of satisfaction is, and they tell me it's a six, six, to, a six to eight, right after they tell me how miserable that they've been and how stressed and overwhelmed that they are. And so the common thing that I hear is, oh, well, I know there are so many people who have it so much worse, so I must not have it that bad. So when you look at where you are on this scale of satisfaction, you want to tell the truth about it. Um, because if you don't tell the truth about where you really are, then we, then we can't really assess where there is to go from here. Okay? And this is not necessarily a talk about burnout, but I, it's just a good idea for you to start to rate yourself and to see where you are, because if you don't know where you are, you don't, you're not going to have a place to start to go somewhere. Here's another way to assess your, your, um, your, assess, to, to assess your pain. We look at the, the bureaucracy of medicine. All right, so here's some, here's some justifications that we make as physicians to offset our suffering. Oh, I just have a high tolerance to stress. Or, you know, oh, my practice is just except, exceptionally chaotic. Um, you know, and then as, as, as things get a little bit worse, oh, my job is constantly in, interfering with my family events, excuse that typo there. And, um, and then I don't have time to take care of me or myself. Okay. So, you know, you have, these, you have these symptoms, you have this satisfaction, this particular uh, level of satisfaction, and you get to this point where you're thinking, you know what, I'm done. I think I just might wanna change my career, my job. So what I wanna talk to you about in this is, you know, there are some common mistakes that we tend to make as physicians when we're considering a job or career change. And so if you're, if you're thinking about changing your jobs, this applies. But if you're thinking about leaving medicine altogether or changing your career, this is especially, uh, this is especially relevant for you. So, so what are, the, what's the, what are these, the things that we do? So the first thing we do is we run away from instead of towards. It, so we, when we are uh, in a bad situation or when we're in a situation where we feel like we're suffering or being done wrong or overly stressed, we want to jump out of that ship as quickly as possible. We want to break camp. And it's understandable. It's understandable you want to end that suffering 
one way or another. But you need to understand that if you just, uh, if you're running away from something rather than war running towards something, then you have no vision of where you're going toward and you may just jump out of the frying pan and into the fire. So we have to start considering a mindful approach um, to sustained happiness, becoming more mindful and, and where we are, what's going on, what's wrong, what the problem is, and then looking at where we want to be. And we're getting to that point. But when we, so it, it's, it's, this is, this is a, a, all about mindset. This particular mistake that we make is about mindset. Um, if you think about finances, if you think about, um, and you think about the law of attraction, and I don't know how many of you know about the law of attraction, uh, but there's a great, great movie called The Secret. And The Secret talks about what we think about, we bring about. And in the realm of, of the brain um, and, and neuroplastics, the brain doesn't, or, or I, I say neuroplastics, plasticics, but what I mean is linguistics. In the realm of the brain and linguistics, the brain only recognizes what we focus on. It doesn't recognize the not or the negative. So when we're running away from, we're in this mind space of, oh, I don't, I don't want to be X, Y, Z. This is what running away from sounds like. I don't want to have this anymore. I don't want to work uh, weekends. I don't want to have call anymore. I, 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 I don't want to be dealing with, um, you know, these crazy staff members, or I don't want to have a bad boss. You get the picture. I, 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 I don't want to be buried in charts, but the brain linguistically recognizes, does not recognize the negative. It only recognizes the command. So when we we're, we're thinking in, in the realm of away from, we're actually reinforcing that which we are running away from, if that makes sense. So um, we create more of what we don't want by running away from that thing. So we have to shift our mindset into the towards. So instead of what you don't want, you start to look at what you do want. What do you want? And we're, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, get to that in just a moment. We often don't think about what we, 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 don't, we do want. We, we are trained and conditioned to think about what we don't want. So when we run away instead of toward, the result is leaping before we have adequately looked. You know, the look before you leap. Well, we will, you'll leap before you look if you're, if you're running away instead of toward. And then that uh, results in more frustration, more stress. And again, as I said earlier, leaping out of the frying pan and right into the fire. The second thing we do is we fail to create our vision. So this is, a, this is building on the first principle we uh, run a, we are running away instead of toward. And when we run away, we fail to create our vision. And, and so as physicians, we're taught to power through whatever, whatever comes our way. And that's gotten us this far. That's what's gotten our success. That's what's caused our success. We've, we've been taught, uh, we've been also told to do along what to do every step along the way. If you think about it, we were told how to get into med, med, medical school. What is it that we needed to do to get into medical school? What, uh, you know, how we studied for the MCAT, how we studied for, how, what, what classes we needed to go to, how we studied for our various standardized exams. We were told how to do our physical exams. Everything that we needed to do along the way, the path was laid before us. We have known that path. We have been told that path. And because we've been, we have been told and that path has been laid before us for so long, as physicians, you then forget that you have choice. You forget about what you want. And so no one really asks us about our vision. 
And therefore, when we're out of the world, we go out into the world, we jump out of residency because we're just trying to get a job and, and come out of um, the, this, these crazy uh, working conditions as a resident and make a little bit more money. We don't always create our vision. We hardly ever create our vision. We just jump into whatever there is that looks pretty good, looks like it looks pretty good to us, and it's that much more money. And, um, and then, you know, this is, this is sort of the pathway, the spiraling pathway to burnout. Um, so that's the second thing that we, that we do. And I want to just uh, welcome uh, our, our new participant. And uh, let's see. Hi, Ruby. <laughs> now, um, so if you don't know where you're going, then you'll end up someplace else, right? So this is the importance of creating a vision. And then the other, you know, this is a, a pretty uh, famous quote, begin with the end in mind by Stephen Covey. I love that quote. And so vision is, no, is, is the pathway, creating your vision is the pathway to knowing what you want. Now, um, there are multiple groups out there that do vision boarding and, and this is all part of the, the law of attraction. This is, this is one of the things in which we as physicians don't remember to, where we, or we don't uh, remember to vision is our careers, okay? So then how do we cultivate our vision by looking at what do we want? You have to start to ask yourself these questions. Well, what is it that you really want? Now, one of the things that I deal with when I'm um, with physicians is th there's this, uh, besides the downplaying of our suffering, there's the tendency to not really say what you want, but say what, what you feel is realistic. And when you, and then that's, that's sort of more of the same, that's on the spectrum of, of uh, running away and toward, instead of toward. So when you really look at what you want, you allow yourself to, um, you really allow yourself to dream in, in a way. And so what is it that you really want? And then, you know, of course there's, where are you now? What is it that needs to change? What's missing? What is it that's missing that if we're there would make a difference? And this is a really important question. Um, and not what's wrong, not what's wrong, because we often go to what's wrong and what's bad, but what, what as the possibility is missing from that job or from that career that if it was placed there might make you want to stay? So that's, those, these are the, some of the questions now. Of course, why do I want to transition? You, you need to know why that you want to transition and what, and what would that new career or job look like ideally, not realistically, but ideally. So I want to share with you <coughs> just a little, a little bit about, you know, the, the mistakes that I've made in, in, in this running away from instead of toward and, and, and jumping before creating a vision um, as a, you know, coming out of residency, I did have uh, the, the opportunity to be in contact with lots of the senior residents that had graduated before me. And one of the things that I realized was that um, these residents were graduating, jumping into careers, jumping into jobs that totally were inconsistent with their values and, and priority systems. And then most of the residents, the, the statistic was then, and I don't know what it is now, but the statistic, it may be similar, is that most, um, most doctors would change jobs at least three times within the first five years of their career. That's, that's a whole lot. And when I heard that statistic, I thought to myself, well, I definitely don't want to be one of those doctors. So instead of um, <laughs> signing a contract with a with a group, I did locum tenens. So you know, I guess you could say I changed jobs more than three times in, in the first five years, <laughs> but of my own doing, of my choice. And I set out on this mission to, you know, create this ideal, um, what this ideal career would look like. 
Now I had the vision for you know the wellness center uh, that I that I currently have, but as I was building the wellness center, I was doing local attendance. So I was part time in my practice and part time uh, working for various locums groups. And uh, one of the things that um, one of the things that was happening for me is that I really I worked for a very large HMO down here in the south in Atlanta. And um, I was having a really rough time um, during that time. I, I just, I hated going into work. As a matter of fact, one day I stepped into that building, that particular building. And this is, and the reason is because there was no autonomy. Their schedules were double booked. It was, it was just, um, the, you know, 15 minute appointments for full physicals. I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir, primary care docs, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I just, this again was reminiscent of what I had experienced in residency that I knew that I could not continue with. And so I was, you know, again, in pain, stepped into the building of that uh, office one day and immediately um, had a migraine. And, um, and at the time I was, my, my migraine frequency was already increasing. So that was the day I knew that I had to get myself out of there. Um, and so I, I didn't think about what it would look like to jump into another bridge job that would suit me. And so instead I looked for what would pay the best and would have the easiest schedule. And I ended up jumping into a position in a pain clinic. Um, again, completely, completely outside of my value system and um, it just was easy and it paid more. Um, what I realized within three months of, or within, yeah, three months of jumping, or actually within 30 days of jumping into that particular position is that I had jumped right into the frying pan, right into the fire, right into the fire, and was increasingly uncomfortable with the amounts of, um, you know, uh, hydrocodone and oxycodone that I was uh, asked to prescribe. And within three months, that particular clinic was shut down. And so then, of course, leaping before I even had the opportunity to create anything else, I uh, jumped into an urgent care position, and which was a little bit better, but still, you know, not quite my um, career ideal. And I, I just proceeded to hop from job, to, from locum's job to locum's job, but meanwhile, while trying to build my practice, that I was so distracted that I wasn't able to put the attention to my practice uh, like I previously had, you know, like I should have been doing. So what happened? Um, at, at the end of the day, I realized that all I was doing was running away. And, um, there came a point where I just said, you know, what I need to do is jump into my vision, which was to be full-time in my practice. And I had to sit down and I created that vision. I looked at, asked these questions, you know, what do I want? What is it needs, that needs to change? What's missing? You know, why? Why do I want to do this? And what does it look like? And I took the leap and, you know, the work was hard. It was blood, sweat, and tears. But 10 years later, you know, I'm thriving. And so this is, I just share that to share that that's what the mistakes look like. And you can skip all of that and cultivate and, and create your vision and cultivate that awareness. You also need to remember that there's a process of change. And, you know, let's, 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 let's just review it. So, you know, you have six stages of change and you have nine processes of change and you just look at, well, where are you in this, in this process? You know, are you at the place where you're, you're contemplating, but you haven't really made a commitment yet because you don't want to start taking action. If you haven't, if you're not even in the preparation phase, if you haven't even made a commitment. Again, this is where we sometimes are when we're running away instead of toward, we leap before we look. So you wanna make sure that you're moving through the processes of change 
in a way that's workable so that when you make the change, it's sustainable, okay? You also want to look at who are you, who's your community of support? Who are your helping relationships? And again, we're going to get to that as well. So where, where are you in the process of change? What steps do you need to take from get to where you are to where you want to be? And what are the tools that can help you to create that, that roadmap? And this leads us to the third uh, big mistake that we make is we fail to seek adequate help and guidance. Why? Because we believe that we should be able to do it by ourselves all the time. It's the myth of all ages and it's not completely our fault. In fact, it's the result of years of conditioning, years of conditioning that starts in medical school. Show no weakness. You have to do it all. You have to know all the answers. If you don't know all the answers, you're going to look stupid. We're punished for not knowing all the answers. If you can't, if you can't do it by yourself, then you're weak. So, you know, these are the things that we have conditioned our, we have been conditioned. Now we have conditioned ourselves. And some, sometimes it is we're conditioning ourselves, but we have been conditioned. And then we enforce this conditioning throughout the years. But here's the thing, it's a huge pitfall in our own develop, in our own development. It's a huge pitfall in our own development because no problem can be solved from the same consciousness that created it. We all have blind spots. And there's a quote, I don't know if I have it on this or not, I don't, but uh, there's an old African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So the reason for support systems is to bring out our blind spots, to reveal our blind spots, spots to us so that when we, we can then take action and fill in the gaps of those blind spots, okay? Um, if, we, if, if we walk around, uh, you know, obviously you can't see your own blind spot. We don't have eyes in the back of our head. And if you think about driving, when you're driving a car, every car has a blind spot. And yeah, you can try to put those little mirrors on and, and but the, even the, the, the blind spot mirrors have distortion. So, you know, even if you, you could do all of the work in the world that you wanna do on yourself or for yourself, because I know that, you know, a lot of us physicians, we are heavy into self-help, self-motivation, self, um, uh, you know, enlightenment, but the, the key word in here is self. It's all self. It's by ourself. And when we are by ourselves, there's no other perspective but our own. We are the fish in water. And the fish in water can't see, you know, anything outside. Can't see the forest for the trees. Or really, maybe it can't see the water for the ocean. <laughs> so how, what, what does it mean to develop adequate support systems? Well, you have your personal guidance opportunities and you have your external guidance opportunities. Your personal, we'll talk a little bit about both of them. Your personal guidance opportunities are your friends and your family members and your colleagues, right? So when you first make that commitment, you share with people, you share with the people who are closest to you. And the thing to be mindful about that in your, with your personal guidance, your personal uh, accountability partners, I'll call them, is that not everybody who's your friend, your family member, your colleague is going to understand what you want to do. They're, and they're, you know, especially if there's a, these are people that are not physicians, but even if they are physicians, not everybody might, un, will understand why you want to potentially leave medicine or why you want to change jobs. All they see is you're a doctor with a good job, making a lot of money. They don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And, um, and they want, and they're wondering why you want to leave and, and leave all of that, leave that good, you know, good job, that good money. Um, that perfect life for some other career, some other job. So friends, while friends and family members are a great guidance opportunity, they're a great place to share their, their 
maybe they're your friends and family members are close to you where you can share with these people and um, because they're, they seem like safe spaces, they may not be able to offer you any real um, effective guidance or support. Uh, so then you have your external guidance opportunities, your external potential uh, accountability partners, mentors, coaches, group masterminds, and the, the, one of the reasons that the external guidance opportunities or the external accountability partners are, um, are very beneficial is because usually these are people who are either trained or are in a similar conversation as you, who have been through what you've gone through, who has the training to the, the training of listening and you know listening is so important it's you know it's one of those uh under under um appreciated things in life when a person has the a trained listening ear like a mentor or a coach um then they can actually hear the things that you're saying that are unresourceful and hear the missing steps in your actions and see the blind spots just in the listening. And so, um, you know, finding a mentor, finding a coach, finding a group mastermind, the benefit of a group mastermind is that you have a, a, a group of people, a small group of people who are in the same conversation as you. So if it's the conversation of job change, then everybody's in that same circumstance. There's usually a leader of the mastermind or maybe a coach who leads the mastermind. And, and, and if it's career change, then everyone's in that same conversation. So then you have a lot of different perspectives of people. You hear a lot of different scenarios of what people are going through and, and the steps, the actions that people are taking in order to um, trans, transition and move into a more resourceful state around and, and, and to reach their goals. So this is the, the opportunity of the external guidance opportunity. So, you know, and, and uh, generally coaches, mentors, group masterminds, they're all in the same conversation. And so they're less like, they're not likely to be judgmental. These are people who are, are there to empower what it is that you want to be empowered by. That makes sense. So, we talked about the three, the big three things, you know, the running away instead of towards, running, uh, um, so running away instead of towards, failing to create the vision, and then failing to seek adequate uh, support systems. So at this moment, I want you to just take a moment, and I'm looking to see, oh, I'm trying to see, oh, here it is. <laughs> it's trying to get to the chat function here. And I want to just ask, um, you've been playing leapfrog too, okay. Uh, I want to um, ask what you've learned. So what is it that you've learned? And I think that you should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Can you, can, let me see. Unmute. All right. So what have you learned? Can you hear me? I can. You can? Mm -hmm. um, I think I've learned that I've been doing a lot of running away from what I don't want to do instead of really doing that visioning to figure out what I do want to do. So that was really, uh, that really resounded with me. Very cool. Very cool. Very good. So, um, anything else? Um, I think I need to do more of that planning, visioning, figuring out yeah. you know, what my real next steps are before mm -hmm. I continue to play leapfrog and jumping from <laughs> one job I don't like to another job I don't like to another job that's not working. I think I just yeah. need to stay put <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, work on building what I want to happen. I'm going to focus on that. Very good. 
All right, excellent. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. <laughs> so um, now what? Now what? So what, what you do now is you can either, you can, you can uh, take these learnings and um, you, can, you can take these learnings and you can implement. That's basically what you can do. Now, what if you need more guidance? Well, if you need more guidance, <clears throat> here's an opportunity for you. You can schedule a free strategy session with me. So this is, what is the strategy session? I know people are wanting to know strategy session. What is it? Uh, it's a free <clears throat> strategy called no cost, not, no obligation, an opportunity to get clarity on where you are in this process of change and discover what your new career or new life could look like by creating your, your career or your life ideal. And then to learn the, the, the various pathways and opportunities to creating an effective strategy and structure for a seamless career transition. All right. So how do you do this? Easy. You click this link. <laughs> you just, you just, and what I'll do is I'll post it in the chat here. Oh, or maybe I'll just click the link and it'll open it up. <laughs> yes. It's going to open a link here and I'll be able to put it in chat. Here's the link. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop this in the chat here. So, you know, if you want to schedule a free strategy session, then you click that link, or you could just go to, to www.stressfreemommd.com and you can click book an appointment. That's how you do it. Oh, I clicked the link again. <laughs> okay. So there's this, uh, this poem that I love uh, by Portia Nelson, and I um, I often read it at the begin, at the end of uh, a lot of my my trainings and uh, presentations. And I'm going to go ahead and read it now. It's, it's called an autobiography in five chapters by Portia Nelson. Chapter one: I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes me forever to find a way out. Chapter two. I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit, but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault, and I get out immediately. Chapter four. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five. I walk down another street. So as I leave you with these three things that we talked about today, my question and the inquiry for you to take with you is when will you choose to walk down another street? So next steps, take action, be bold, discover what's possible and schedule a breakthrough call right now. <laughs> Thank you all for being on the um, being on this webinar today, and we'll be doing um, definitely more of these on a regular basis. And so, um, what I ask of you is, if you enjoyed this webinar, 
um, I ask you to post on Facebook, post on the Facebook group or on a Facebook page and um, let us know that you enjoyed it. And when we do our next one, we're gonna be doing the next one uh, next Wednesday. Uh, and, we're, and I'm gonna do this, this same one again and then I'll be doing EMR strategies. I will be alternating that one. Just um, invite others in, invite uh, others to participate and um, let them know what you've learned. Okie dokie, any questions? If there are no questions, then we shall adjourn. Thank you for joining. Have a great night.